she can make your holiday season stress-free and so sweet. Martha Stewart is here. From the dinner to the decor, we've enlisted the queen of home and holidays to teach you how to have a stress-free holiday. Please welcome my good friend, Martha Stewart. How are you, Martha? I'm good, but I'm so surprised that you think I can make everybody's life stress-free when we've been dealing with stress for two years now, Dr. Oz. Well, I, I like to put a, a big, big barrier between you and success because I know you'll jump it. Let me give you a number. 88% of people say the holidays cause them stress, but you seem, I mean, I spent the holidays with you. You seem, you know, you keep cool. What's the secret? Well, I'm organized, first of all, and I've been doing Christmas and Halloween and Easter and New Year's and Mother's Day for a long, long time. And um, and I realize that people really just want to feel good at the holiday time. Even if they are stressed, they want to feel good and they want to have a nice time. They want to treat their children nicely. And uh, and so I try I go all out. I go all out every single holiday. Uh, with things, you know, it's just uh, important to me to make everybody uh, celebrate, and and the holidays should be celebrated. They sure should be. So let's get to your first stress-free holiday how-to for decorating. You say you don't have to spend a ton of money, but you can transform your home with the items that you already have around you year-round. So, what are some of your holiday how-tos for a sneaky well, seasonal? Well, lots rematch? of us have oranges and lemons and limes and citrus fruits uh, in the refrigerator or on the counter. Uh, oranges ready to be peeled or squeezed. So one very nice way to do it is a very old-fashioned idea. Uh, you take an orange, uh, and to help you along, use a little bamboo skewer, make little holes, little rows of holes, and insert whole cloves right in the hole. And this uh, you'll you'll um, find that your fingertips might hurt a little bit after doing an entire orange, but this is kind of a uh, a fun way to make a beautiful, beautiful, um, look at this orange. Look how pretty that looks. And in the olden days, they would do this and let the oranges dry, and they would be like spiced oranges. Uh, they would um, smell really, really good, and they look very festive and very nice. So you can then use, if you have some cake stands, these are cake stands. Uh, you can get them at Macy's or at Martha.com. And there are beautiful white ironstone cake stands in, in descending size. And then just go out and cut some evergreens. If you have an evergreen tree on your property or or buy a, a bough of evergreens at the at the market. And then just insert evergreens all throughout. That is a beautiful, festive, and very, very pretty and, and highly aromatic centerpiece for your house. You know, I'm copying. It doesn't look quite as pretty as yours, but I'm getting close. So let me ask you. Oh, yeah. No, yours, yours looks great. I mean, it, it can just be a mound of oranges in a bowl. Look, these are just bowls of limes. That that looks perfectly nice without <laughs> any of the uh, uh, cloves, the lemons, the oranges. And then people can come and they can actually eat. If I call it an edible centerpiece. Well, I'll tell you, the fact that you said that I'm perfect, this is the first time ever on my show you said that usually I get the opposite, <laughs> but the day's young. Now that we have the home decorated, a lot of people struggle maintaining their daily self-care routines. You know, the holidays destroy all those, those routines anyway. The last time you were on the show, you discussed how you took care of yourself during the pandemic. So we got to all know, what is your stress-free holiday how-to for self-care, for yourself? Well, um, at night after a long day, how about a nice Epsom salt bath? Put on a face mask, a, a good CBD face mask would be so delightful. Um, don't drink. I mean, the less you drink alcohol, I think the better. So that's not gonna that's not gonna relax you as much as an Epsom salt bath. So I I just uh, put a mask on, put some good body creams on afterward, and go to bed. Uh, that's a very nice way to take care of yourself. And, uh, and of course, always, uh, you know, keep your skin glowing with good skin care. Never go to bed with your face dirty or covered with makeup. Um, and you'll look better and better. Wash your hair frequently and uh, blow dry it or just let it air dry. Uh, you, you know it makes you look good. Try to do that during the holidays. It's very important. Take the time to do it, too. You know what throws a lot of people off? is that they have an unruly family member who gets in the way of the self-care <laughs> they're looking for. Do you have someone like that in your life? Of course, everybody does. There is not one family that doesn't have one or more difficult individuals hanging around someplace or other. Um, 
you can sort of say, well, I'm not entertaining this Christmas. That's one good excuse. Uh, we're going away, uh, so I'm so sorry we won't be seeing you. You can say that, too. Little white lies sometimes are effective. Um, and I have a friend who, you know, calls up and said, when is your Christmas party? And I, I said, I'm not having one. And I'm really not having one. I would invite her if I were, but she doesn't believe me. She called three friends afterwards to see if they were going to my Christmas party. So there are people like that that are kind of pushy and, and just want to, you know, just want to be there. Um, but uh, again, if you treat them a little bit more kindly than, than you feel like treating them, maybe they'll come around. Well, the reality is that a lot of folks have well, challenging families that they have to celebrate the holidays with. And Stephanie knows this all too well. She sent us a video asking for help and how to respond kindly but firmly to her family. Take a look. Hi, Martha. So my family won't stop prying into my personal life. They want to know when am I going to get married? When am I going to get a better job? Everybody seems to have an opinion this time of year, and I can't take it anymore. I want to tell them to just zip it, but I don't want to cause any family drama. So any advice on how to tell them calmly but firmly that it's none of their business? <laughs> well, um, if it's possible, Stephanie, get on a plane and go someplace. Just go away by yourself or with a friend and, and you know, Beat them at their own game. Um, that's one thing to do. Another thing is just to smile and say, it's none of your business and just walk away. I mean, that is another, you know, it's do it with a smile. You're not going to get anywhere getting mad at them and having a fight. It just doesn't work, especially at holiday time. I like that. I like the direct approach with a smile on your face. Then it's a little yeah. sweet, but it's, a, it's enough of a jab that it pushes them away. All right. <laughs> when we come back, Martha is revealing her sneaky tricks to making hosting a holiday easier, but no less impressive. I'm back with Martha Stewart, who is teaching you how to have a stress-free holiday. Now, now, the most important and perhaps stressful part of the holidays is the hosting part. I'm getting very stressed out, by the way, Dr. Oz, with all these questions. <laughs> but, but this is one you're actually good at, right? Sometimes you're you gotta... stressing me out. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. And sometimes trying to manage the entire holiday dinner can be overwhelming. But you got it all worked out. You got tips to lighten the load for hosting this holiday season. I'm turning it over to you. I've got all my props here. What should we do? Okay. Well, we have a lot of, I don't like to call them shortcuts necessarily. But um, if you want to have a, a nice greeting for your guests, if they're coming, if your people are coming over for dinner, serve them a nice mold wine. That's a hot mold wine. We have right here on the stove in a heavy enamel cast iron pan. We have two bottles of wine. Uh, add a little cheesecloth filled with molding wine spices. These are delicious. Oh. And you can get them on Martha.com, our beautiful new website, Dr. Oz, which you have to visit. I visited uh, it before the show. I was looking uh, around. Oh, good. We have beautiful things on it. Tie this with a with a nice little bow and leave a long end so that this can hang out, okay? So that you can then pull this out before you serve the wine. Should I throw and a then, surgical knot or just a regular bow knot? Bow knot's fine. But, if, but you're a surgeon, you can do whatever you want. A couple <laughs> of little zests of orange, again, inserted with some, some um, cloves into that. Just let that steep for, oh, a half hour or so. And then you have a lovely, lovely uh, wine to serve in, in punch cups like this, if you'd like. Now, if you don't want wine and it's maybe midday and you're going to have a lunch, use apple cider. Uh, my 10-year-old granddaughter made 40 gallons of apple cider for me this year for my own apples. And uh, it makes delicious mold cider. So I'm going to give us a taste here. I just made it. And I tell you, the aroma's it makes your Filled whole it. house smell so festive, yeah. doesn't it? It fills the whole studio, frankly, and the taste is yep. unbelievable. And it's so simple, and, and it, it looks like it's festive. What about hosting a yep. big meal? Do you divvy out the responsibilities, okay. or do you own it all? Oh, well, you can, and, and you can also take some shortcuts. We just came out with a beautiful line of frozen entrees, desserts, and appetizers. And these are available at Walmart, at Kroger's, and, and various other grocery stores. But this is our apple crisp. This is a heavy amount of apple crisp. You can take it right out of the box, uh, and, and when it's frozen, put it in your own baking dish. And here it is right here. Do you have some there to taste, Dr. Oz? My mouth's full with the neck. It's really good. It is so good. 
So that's just one example of all the great things that we're having on um, in the grocery stores now for your convenience. We have pigs in the blanket. We have lovely little tartlets. We have um, lovely, lovely entrees with meat and chicken. And, uh, and I think um, everybody would really uh, benefit from the ease of preparation because, again, um, it's, uh, you might be used to using frozen foods, but these are really different and delicious frozen food. Yeah, I have a, uh, my version of a mistletoe up here. Mistletoe to the new holiday season. <laughs> Everybody, up next, Martha's bringing us the thoughtful gifts that will not break the bank. We'll be right back. We all know the struggle too well. The holidays are here, and the month of December just flies by in the blink of an eye, stop of a finger, and with only days left to spare, you are left scrambling for that perfect presence. But have no fear. Because Martha Stewart is here, and she's given us her best gifting tips for a stress-free holiday. Now, the last two years made it really difficult to get gifts. I get it. It's going to be a little different. But, Martha, you believe people can still show their love without bending their budget. Well, yes, and I think homemade gifts are always very well appreciated and well liked, and, uh, and they're not so hard to make. So, Martha, I, I, I've heard people brag about this gift that you give, brown sugar chocolate chunk shortbread logs that can be shared with all... And it's incredibly simple to make. So what's actually in the shortbread log that you make for this well, gift? Okay, so two sticks of softened butter. And if you want to make them brown butter, brown sugar shortbreads, you can brown the butter first. But the recipe just calls for regular softened butter. Uh, three quarters of a cup of packed light brown sugar. You have it right there. Yep. And a quarter of a cup of, granu- of confectioner's sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla. A teaspoon mm-hmm. of salt. Two and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, mm. finely chopped. Chop that with a serrated knife. It chops up really fast and easy. And then to um, affix the sanding sugar onto the logs, uh, just use one large uh, egg white, softly beaten to roll uh, to brush onto the logs. And that's it. It's a very easy recipe, and anybody, including you, Doctor Oz, can make it. All right, show me how to put them together. <laughs> okay, so once you mix the bat, the dough, um, you can chill it a little bit and then roll it into logs. And I, I like to wrap the logs in parchment paper um, and then in a festive tissue paper. Well, hold on a second. Don't you have these- to, Martha, I'm, read, I'm reading your recipe, Martha. This is what doctors do. In your, in your recipe, the Martha Stewart recipe, it says I've got to rinse these, give them a little bath in egg yolks or egg whites. Is that true? Egg white, egg white and roll in, in sanding sugar. Yes. Hold, hold a second, hold a Before second. Before you cut. Wait for me, wait for it, wait for it. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm not the speedster that you are, Martha. Hold a second, I'm painting here. Okay, and then I got the, it's all Okay, ba- then roll it, in, roll it in your sanding sugar. Yes. There or there sprinkle it. No, I, I rolled it because you told me to. Okay, good. Okay. All right. And then put that on a piece of parchment paper. I don't have to cut it first? Well, how, I can't see how big it is uh, on right. Zoom. It's a little hard to it's see. It's okay. I got it here. I, so, I got it. I'm going to cut this baby. Okay. All right. Uh, and then when, when people get this, by the way, they cook it at 600 degrees for how long? Oh, oh not 600. No, maybe maybe 350. And do I broil or bake and, it? Oh, bake. This is These are cookies. I'm kidding you, you put, Martha. If you, Oh my if you goodness! Put it, if you put that in a 600 degree oven, I don't even know of an oven actually that goes up to 600 degrees, Doctor Oz. <laughs> Surgeon. Surgeon. <laughs> All right, so you wrap it up like this. Once again, surgical knots or bow knots? You got to be specific, Martha. Here. Well, no. Now you tie it with a tight knot. I would. I would say um, just a, a regular knot. You know, one, over one, one way and then over the other way. Like you knot your shoes with, right. if you want to never take your shoes sure. off. And uh, and then you have a very nice little festive log. Freeze these and give them with instructions. We have clip art right on the website. Look, that beautiful little clip art. It says brown sugar, chocolate chips. It gives you baking instructions. So you're, you're um, <coughs> the person who's getting the gift. Uh-oh. <coughs> coughing because I ate a piece of cookie. Never do that when you're talking to Dr. Oz. You should never eat the props, Martha, but I am eating the prop, and this tastes great. Isn't it great? It's a really, and do you know how to make brown butter, by the way? No, how do you make brown butter? Well, put your butter, those two sticks of butter, in a small saucepan and put it on medium-high heat, melt it, and watch it carefully, 
but the butter and the milk solids will darken as they cook. Let it get to a nice nutty brown, and that's it. That's brown butter. And it has a very different taste than regular melted butter. Well, whatever you did to these cookies, they're unbelievable, Martha. Yeah, there's your nice little log. You can, uh, you can put this on with double stick tape right here like that and freeze it. <laughs> all right, Martha, you can find this recipe in the December issue of Martha Stewart Living. And for all the amazing items you've seen today, you can find them at Martha's Holiday Hub on Martha.com. She's got you covered from the decor to the food. It's your one-stop shop for all things holiday. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.